there, Janet Fritz here for Galaxy Girl Creations. Welcome to my channel. Today I am working on a layout that is a challenge over at the Scrap Academy Facebook group. And the challenge is to not use any of my traditional scrapbooking cutting um, utensils. So no trimmer, no craft knife, no scissors. So um, there's a lot of tearing in this particular video. Um, so I am playing with the idea of using that stencil you saw with this uh, paper glaze from Picket Fence Studio. And I don't end up going that route, but that was my first inclination. And so uh, you'll see that change. And then you see me here, I used my bone folder. These are scrap pieces of paper from my scrap bin. And I thought, what better way to get some smaller pieces um, but to raid the scrap bin. So all I did was fold it over each direction with my bone folder and uh, then I was able to rip it along that line because it broke down all of the fibers in the paper. It made it really easy to break it down or to rip it pretty much straight. And um, you know if you go back and forth enough with it it's going to rip anyway so I thought that was a good way to get some nice straight lines and not use any cutting utensils um, or tools. Now I have this really pretty piece of paper here that I am going to just use my metal ruler on. The metal ruler has like a really sharp edge on it and so I could just rip it with that and I like the way that looks. I am going to distress all of these edges because they are torn already and so you'll see me distress those later and here I'm trying to put down another letter but the first one's not quite dry because this stencil's pretty thick it's leaving um, a pretty thick layer of that paper glaze the paper glaze dries really fast if it's not that thick so um, in the end I'm not going to end up using the stencil for that and um, I actually like how it came out better without using the paper glaze so um, you're going to see me here try again with the paper glaze over this Prima stencil and this is like a gold paper glaze. I really love the color of it but I kind of made it a little bit on the darker side than what I was going for in this. So I will probably use this piece of paper for something else. Um, so here I pulled out my little distressor tool. You could do this with the edge of scissors if you wanted. I'm not cutting anything so I don't count this as um, using a cutting tool because I'm not actually cutting I'm just fraying up the edges you could do that with a whole bunch of different things um, so or you could not fray them if you don't want to um, and again like I said I'm not using my scissors I'm not cutting anything I'm just fraying the edges so hopefully that doesn't count as cutting um, using a cutting tool because I can't actually cut anything with this particular tool anyway <laughs> so here I am using the same stencil and I have pulled out my Catherine Pooler inks and I am using um, those to just put a little bit of color on the page that is not covered by that really pretty plaid and basically this is layout is about these apricots we have an apricot tree this is the first year it's actually given us apricots and we were really thrilled to have them it wasn't a huge batch um, but we were thrilled to have them because we have a nectarine and a peach tree but both of them have curl and they need to be sprayed and didn't get sprayed this year and so the fruit on them is not very good and so um, we were thrilled to have the apricots because the apricot tree is is nice and healthy and doesn't need anything done to it um, and also it's the first year it's produced so it tastes really great so um, I'm basically just documenting that we got these apricots off our tree. Nothing, no big story, just kind of a, you know, wanted to make a note of what year it started producing some fruit. So I'm going to tear this edge of the white paper and I'm going to curl it back just with my hands and I'm going to use another piece of this um, plaid paper and I'm going to tuck it behind so that it gives a little bit of that plaid on the opposite side of the page. And if you're curious to know, that paper is from Jen Hadfield's Hey Hello. It's called Cupcake Surprise. And uh, the other side has like, I think it's hedgehogs or some kind of critter coming out of a top of a cupcake. Um, <laughs> wasn't crazy about the other side, but I do love this plaid. 
And then the two inks that I used are Be Mine and Tiara. And I really like how those look. Um, they match the apricot really well, especially where the two blend together. It gives me a little bit of a more orangey color. And then I'm going to work on my title. It's going in that same lower corner that I started doing the stenciling in and ended up um, changing my mind about. And my title is going to be Sweet Juicy Apricots. I'm using two different fonts, and those are um, two different... Actually, one is a Thickers. The yellow is Thickers, and the pink ones, I think, are uh, Heidi Swap. And, um, and then that piece that says Sweet... I'm not sure where I got that from. I have these bins full of color that are color coded. You can see on the right there the red or the dark pink one. And anytime I am pretty much done with a sticker sheet or use the majority of it, I will cut up the rest and throw them into these bins and they are sorted by color. And then when I am doing a layout like this that's not particularly uh, themed by a particular collection or whatever, it's just a one off layout. It's not going in like my Hawaii album I'm using certain papers for, certain collections, but this is just a one-off in my album. I will raid those bins and um, pull stuff in from those, and I really enjoy having those because it's super easy to just pull yellow and pink and kind of flip through and see what applies and what I can use. And there's also a lot of uh, very... Um, universal type things in those bins like tabs and labels and that kind of stuff so they're a quick go-to makes it easy to find things and I'm pretty sure that's where I got the word sweet from and uh, all of the other <laughs> embellishments on this layout are pretty much from there with the exception of two pieces that I pulled from Doodlebug's fruit stand I have just a few bits of that left over and it's an it's an old collection but I have one that says hello sunshine and one that says you're sweet and it, they one has a sun on it and then the other one has a strawberry so I used those and they're going to be in the upper right hand corner of my photo but um, otherwise that's pretty much everything is from those bins including these buttons and I really like these little buttons they're kind of an apricot color I am using some glue dots to hold it down. I don't use glue dots all that often, but for these types of things they work well, uh, especially if I don't want to sit there and hold it with my wet adhesive. And I used some pink baker's twine through there, and I just used some jewelry snips to snip the baker's twine. Um, and so those are not traditional scrapbooking tools, so I don't really count those as cutting something. Um, they did cut the baker's twine, but it's not a traditional thing that I would um, necessarily carry as a scrapbooking tool. And you can see there, I have two different pairs. That one is a, it, it also curls the wire, and that one is just a snip. It's wire snips, actually. So, um, hopefully those don't count as well. But I didn't have any other way, really, to cut that baker's twine. So, um, it, pretty much anything else is all done by, actually everything else is done by just cutting, or ripping and tearing. And then I did go around all of those layers with the pink ink um, to add more dimension. And just, it, especially on those roughed up edges, it just sucks in the, the ink really well. And so it gives it a nice defining line around all of the different pieces of paper. And then I do have another sticker up, up right above the uh, apricots that says Complete Perfection. And that is pretty much going to do it for this layout. I don't have a lot more going on. Oh, yes, I do. I do have some uh, of these little dots. And these are not enamel dots. They are puffy dots. I've had them in my stash for a long time. They are also out of that dark pink bin of goodies. Um, I do have a dark pink and I actually have two light pinks because there are so many different pinks or so many pink things in scrapbooking that I actually had to break it out into multiple boxes but all my other boxes are uh, one off like yellow, red, orange, green um, with the exception of aqua. Aqua has two as well so apparently aqua and pink are very popular in scrapbooking. In case you didn't already know that by looking at collections um, from the last five or six years. <laughs> 
So I am tucking some of those little pink puffy stickers into the part that I've rolled back and I like how that looks. I like that it brings uh, that darker color in and I'm trying to use up the whole thing so I've got five little spots that I've put those into. And then uh, lastly I will go around the entire layout including the white paper and I am going to add a little bit of pink to the edges and that will pretty much finish off the layout. So if you have any questions or comments, just drop me a note down below and I will get back to you as quickly as I possibly can. And if you're interested in learning more about Scrap Academy, you can go check them out on Facebook. Um, they have all kinds of good information and ways to, um, different things to teach you more about scrapbooking. So if you are a beginner especially, that is an awesome place to go. Um, and they have different levels of challenges each week. I have tried the what is considered the most difficult, I guess. It's the PhD level, and I've kind of challenged myself to do that on my own. Um, that's my own challenge to myself. So thanks again for watching. Here's the close-ups. Bye.